We've done plenty of reporting in recent weeks and months on new abortion restrictions imposed in red states. But this past week, we've seen abortion bans fail in two states where Republicans have the majority. In South Carolina, the state Senate rejected a near total ban on abortions. Now, the bill had already passed in the House, but it failed when five women in the Senate, three of them Republicans, opposed it. One of those Republicans spoke with my colleague Katie Fang this morning. I'm a female first. Certainly, I'm conservative. I don't want any woman to have an abortion. I hope that she will not. But I'm not going to judge her or take away um, that right up to a point. A similar ban failed to advance this past week in Nebraska's legislature. The legislation fell one vote shy of the 33 needed to advance, with two senators choosing not to vote. That means that efforts to restrict abortion access in Nebraska will likely fail for a second conservative year. I'm joined now by another South Carolina Republican who voted against the abortion ban, State Senator Penry Gustafson. Senator, thank you so much for being here today. So you oppose abortions. So how did you come to your decision to vote against the bill? Well, uh, thank you for having me on the show. And there were many considerations. Um, I think the discussion, the narrative around the topic of abortion is much too narrow because there's m much more to pregnancy, as I spoke on the floor uh, at length this past week, uh, to be considered. How did I come to this? Well, the number one thing is this particular House bill, I do not think can stand up to constitutional South Carolina constitutional muster. So we, we pass a great heartbeat um, bill S1 in 2021, and it was challenged, and the Supreme Court of South Carolina did uphold it. Whatever we pass, the very first thing it has to be is constitutional. Mm -hmm. And there is conflicting language in this bill. There are other issues with this bill. There are um, uh, things laid out with no consequences. Um, I have some questions about contraceptives, personally, and if it's not going to hold up, it's not even worth, you know, why, why do it? So that's one that's one reason why we did join up, because uh, none of us really thought that could happen. There are a lot yeah. of other reasons why, but that was my number one reason. That was your number one. Okay. I, I was not... Um... I think that's very important for people to, to, to know, because I think folks do expect state legislators to take all of these different things into consideration. And it feels like sometimes that never happens. But I, I, I feel like I knew that there was something going on in South Carolina, which is why we wanted to have you on today. I, I will oh, claim for you. There's a lot I'll, going. Do you realize we have a Senate bill that we passed, we voted for, we sent over S-474 to the South Carolina House? They received it and sat on it. That bill is sound, and it's also a six-week bill. It gives some sort of cushion to the individual woman. Uh, again, I, I, I'm not, I don't support abortion any more than Senator uh, Sin or Senator Sheely. None of us support abortion. But the thing is this, I don't believe abortion is a right, but it is reality. And as a legislator, that's what I have to do. I have to speak to it as a legislator. So the very first thing is having it be legally sound, then um, mm. looking at other parts of it. But yeah, it, it, it just was a not a good bill. It wasn't a good bill. Senator, before I, I let you go, I guess I, there's a, um, a, a little sound I, I wanted to play for you. I don't think we have the time to play it, but I was struck by the fact that Five Repub that yeah, the three Republicans, you and two of your other colleagues, joined with other colleagues to stop this bill for the myriad of reasons you discussed. I have been making the case that um, bans such as these are near total bans. They don't just affect you know women who voted for Joe Biden, right? They affect women across the board, regardless of who they voted for in the last election. What is your message to your Republican colleagues, not just in South Carolina, but as other uh, state legislatures across the country? Um, are taking up potential legislation similar to the bill in South Carolina? Well, my number one message is to the constituents of South Carolina. I do not focus on national politics. I got to keep my eye on the ball and what we're doing at hand. It's very important, and we need to get it right for our state. Our state is overwhelmingly uh, support restrictions on abortions. 
uh, we all agree upon that. And, I, you know, my, my message to my constituents in South Carolina is I am truly doing the best I can do, ask for your prayers and guidance. I think this is the right thing. And I also think it's the right thing if the South Carolina House takes up our bill, they have six days to pass it, they need to do it because we are becoming a destination abortion state. We've got thousands of abortions. They are multiplying. And over half of those people coming to our state are from outside state. We, we can't have that, South Carolina. Well, Senator Gustafson, I appreciate your time. I will say, I do believe that due to restrictions across the country, across the South and across the country at large, North Carolina and South Carolina are two of the only places right now in the southern region of the United States of America where women who do need an abortion, for whatever reason that is, can get one. So I think that's why people are coming to your state. I appreciate your time so much. I want to turn from the Palmetto State to the Cornhusker State. And I am joined now by Nebraska State Senator Megan Hunt. Senator Hunt, it is very uh, good to see you. Now, in Nebraska, these abortion restrictions have now failed twice in the state legislature. Last session, uh, a bill was brought up. This session, this bill was just failed. Do you expect Republicans to make a third attempt at a bill in next year's legislative session? Thank you, Simone. It's really good to see you. I think that we can expect opponents of abortion to try to take this up every single chance that they get. I mean, why would we blame them for doing that? Um, we're going to continue to see abortion in red states and across the country be one of the hottest, you know, hot button controversial issues that drive these elections. But I also think that we've gone so far in a radical way that even Republicans, even conservatives, even people who are anti-abortion are realizing that without the backstop of Roe versus Wade, we've really gone too far. You know, you, you bring that up, and, and in Nebraska, this that seemingly is the explanation for um, why this bill is currently, currently not a law. Because if it weren't for one uh, state senator, uh, Merv Reepy, uh, who voted present, and, you know, Senator Reepy, he is a Republican, uh, this bill we would be having a different conversation today. So do you think that there's hope that more Republicans might follow his example, that there is a way to come together for some bipartisan legislation, if you will, in the unicameral? Yes, and it's so encouraging to me because I really believe that you know, no matter what your views are on abortion, we can all agree that there's no one-size-fits-all law that can apply to every pregnancy, because every pregnancy is different. And even conservatives have difficult pregnancies. Even Republicans sometimes need um, to end a pregnancy, even if they're anti-abortion. And lawmakers understand that. Lawmakers in Nebraska have said that they trust doctors, they trust our health care providers in our state to provide the standard of care, and they trust our neighbors in Nebraska to make the best decision for them and their families. Uh you are, before I let you go, you are the focus of an ethics violation. Uh, and I was reading about this, and you are the focus of that because you have a, a child who is transgender and you voted against a bill that would ban gender affirming health care for minors. Now, I just want to give you a moment to address this, uh, these claims in this investigation quickly. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Um, you know, being a mother and loving your child is never a conflict of interest. Um, I'm under an investigation for supporting a bill or for opposing a bill that would ban health care for trans kids in Nebraska. And someone has come up and said, because I have a trans kid, I have a conflict of interest. And um, my response to that is, if they want to fight about that, they can do that in court, because being a parent is not a conflict of interest. And I'm just going to keep staying in my lane and minding my business and doing my job. Well, State Senator Megan Hunt, I appreciate your time and your lane today. Thank you. Thank you very much.